Hi, it's Lori with Sorted by Lori. I love Google Calendar. I use it about a thousand times a day, and I use it for everything from organizing my schedule and my things to do. I create reminders, and I also organize my projects through Google Calendar. So I want to share with you how to set up your calendar to make your life easy and less overwhelming. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you what my, my own calendar looks like so you can see how it's used practically. First of all, you'll need a Google account. If you don't already have one, they're very easy to set up. Once you have your account, go to the calendar page and you'll see that you already have a calendar set up. What you're going to want to do is go into this main calendar, click on calendar settings, and you're going to change the name so that there's a one in front of it. I'm going to call this calendar one dash main calendar. The important thing is that you have a one in front of the calendar name. You can call it whatever you want to as long as there's a one there. Now click save. Then you're going to create your second calendar. Call this calendar two dash things to do. Click create calendar. Your third calendar is going to be three dash informational. And finally, your fourth calendar is going to be 4-history. The colors of your calendars are automatically assigned, and so you may want to change them. At the least, you'll want to make sure that they're all distinguishable from one another. Now you have four calendars, your main calendar, your things to do calendar, your informational calendar, and your history calendar. Also, Google has a holidays count calendar that's automatic, but you can uncheck that if you want to. Let's look at calendar one first. I'm going to uncheck all of the other calendars for now. Calendar one will be your main calendar. This is where you'll put any appointments or any items that require action from you at a certain time and or date. I'm going to add a few examples of things that would go on this calendar. First, I'm going to add a dentist appointment. Let's do that today at 10 o'clock, Dr. Wesley's office. I'm going to set a 30-minute pop-up reminder so I'm ready to leave my house at the appropriate time. Now I'm going to add dinner with friends next Friday from 7 to 10 p.m. I'm going to put another pop-up, 30-minute pop-up reminder and an email reminder one day in advance so I remember to confirm plans with the group. Then I have a potential client meeting on Tuesday at 1030. I'll also set a 30-minute pop-up reminder and a one-day email reminder so again I can confirm with her one day in advance. Okay, now I'm going to set a recurring item on my calendar. Let's say we have swim lessons every Wednesday at 4 o'clock at Emler Swim School. I'm going to make this start on December 9th, and let's put it ending on January 13th, the last class day. So now you can see this item will repeat automatically on my calendar until the last class day so that I know where I have to be every Thursday or every Wednesday at four o'clock. So that's how I suggest using this main calendar. Again, you'll put any appointments or any items that require action from you on a certain day and or time on this calendar. Now let's look at the second calendar, which is your things to do calendar. This calendar is where you'll put any tasks or projects where the time frame is a little bit more a little bit more flexible. As a general rule, I like to add tasks to Mondays. This works well for me because I can look at my list each Monday and decide what I really want to, what I really need to accomplish that week, and I can plan my week out. If I have a million things to do that week, I might move a less important item to the following week. So let me add a few examples of items that would be appropriate for the things to do calendar. So let's say that Friday night dinner with friends is a birthday party and I need to get a gift. I'm going to add buy birthday gift for Trisha on the Monday prior. That way, whenever Monday rolls around, I know I need to add time to buy the birthday gift in my schedule that week, and I can fit it in whenever I have extra time over the next few days. 
I also include some recurring items on my things to do calendar. For example, I usually grocery shop on Sunday mornings, so I include that as a recurring things to do. I keep it on my things to do calendar because I don't have to shop on Sunday morning. It's pretty flexible. I can move it around if something else comes up. Another example of a recurring item for your things to do calendar would be like changing your air filters. I think you're supposed to do that every three months, so I'm going to put that on my calendar to recur every Thursday, third Thursday of the month. One thing I want to address about this calendar is that if you have a job where you work at regular hours, when you're at work, you're focusing on work, and when you're at home, you're focusing on home, it might make sense for you to create a things to do calendar for home and a things to do calendar for work. It's still really important to have only one main calendar for all your appointments and the places that you need to be, but it could make sense to have two calendars for your things to do so you can easily view the things you need to do at work when you're at work and the things you need to do at home when you're at home. This doesn't make sense for me right now because my home and work um, is really uh, intertwined right now. All right, moving on to your informational calendar. This is where you'll put any items that are good to know, but don't necessarily require action on your part. For example, let's say my husband is out of town from December 7th to December 12th. This is something I'd put on my informational calendar, so I'm aware of it, but it doesn't overwhelm my regular calendars. This is also a great place to put birthdays. Finally, let's take a look at the history calendar. I found this to be incredibly useful, and you'll understand why when I show you my personal calendar in action. As soon as an, an appointment has passed or a task has been accomplished, move it to the history calendar like so. This is wonderful because you can very easily identify anything that hasn't been done. So if I see an item showing up on Monday the 30th, I know that I need to move it to another day because I didn't do it. Also, this allows you to reduce the visual clutter on your calendar, which can be really overwhelming. Let me show you what this looks like on my personal calendar. Okay, so here's my personal calendar with all my calendars visible except the history one. Now I'm going to check it. So you can see when it's visible, the amount of stuff on there is kind of overwhelming. When I uncheck it, it's much more manageable. I don't like to delete all my appointments and things because I may have to go back and reference something, but with doing it this way, it's still there, but I don't have to look at it all the time. I want to show you now how I use my calendar. Let's pretend that it's Monday, December 7th. As I mentioned before, I like to plan my week on Mondays, so I'd first look at my week with just my main calendar checked. This way I can see exactly what I've committed to this week. So I have a few things going on. We're going to Napa on Thursday. Woohoo! I have a dinner on Monday, a manicure appointment on Tuesday, and I'm going with some friends to a Christmas event on Tuesday evening. Then I have an appointment on Wednesday, as well as the times that the nanny will be at my house. So now that I can see clearly what I have to work around, let me click on my things to do calendar and my informational calendar. There's not much on my informational calendar, so let's focus on my things to do. Again, the items on my things to do calendar are a little more flexible, so I'm going to look at each item and decide what I really need to do this week and when I think I'll have time to do it. I'll organize my things to do around my appointments. I'm going to pick a few things that I think I can accomplish on Monday. I'll definitely have time to address and mail my Christmas cards because I want to get them out. I'll have time to send a quick text to Connie about babysitting. I'll also have time to create my packing list for Napa and I'll have time to do these three things for sorted. So that means I'll move Christmas gift shopping, small business development center, and internship for Pietro to Tuesday. I really like to look at my calendar in the month view most of the time um, just so I always have an idea of what my month looks like. If you like doing this too, I recommend getting the Calendoo app for your phone. It's awesome and it works great with Google Calendar. This way all your appointments are accessible when you're on the go and you can see your calendar items on a month view. Most of the other calendar apps I've tried don't have that option. So that's it. 
I've been working on this system for a few years and I feel like it's working so smoothly for me. I really hope it's helpful for you. If you have any questions, give me a holler in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.